Hi, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com. Have you ever wondered how to find M8, the Lagoon Nebula? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing summertime celestial wonder. This video is brought to you in part by OPT Telescopes, a world leader in telescopes and accessories. Click my affiliate link in the description below to help support Cosmos Safari's mission to bring the universe closer than you think. M8, the Lagoon Nebula, also known as NGC 6523, is an enormous H2 emission nebula located in the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer. At a distance of over 4,100 light years, M8 was first discovered by Giovanni Hodiera by 1654. The brightness and angular size of M8 makes it one of the most amazing examples of star forming regions in the entire sky. At an apparent angular size of 90 arc minutes by 40 arc minutes, or about 1.5 degrees by 0.67 degrees, M8, the Lagoon Nebula, is extremely large in the sky. It's nearly triple the width of the full moon. At a magnitude of 6.0, M8 is bright enough to be observed with the naked eye from dark skies, and is one of the best targets for binoculars and telescopes. Due to the high sensitivity of cameras compared to the human eye, astrophotography can be conducted on this object even from light polluted areas, especially when combined with light pollution or narrowband filters. As always, large diameter optics will provide the best results by increasing the light gathering and resolving power. With this object, however, it's important to make sure that you keep the focal length of your optics slow enough to see the entire object within your field of view. Step one, find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the Northeast US, we will start our observation by locating the teapot asterism as it rises in the southeastern sky just after sunset, starting in late June and early July. The teapot asterism is part of the constellation Sagittarius and is made of many of the constellation's brightest stars. Throughout the summer, the teapot will move westward as time progresses towards fall. However, due to the shortening of days and nighttime coming earlier each month, the teapot remains in the evening sky throughout the summer and into the fall, and sets just after sunset in the southwestern sky by early to mid-November. Step 2. Find the object using star hopping. We are going to use the stars of the teapot to help us find M8, the Lagoon Nebula. Starting at the teapot, we first need to identify some of the major component stars of this important asterism. The teapot itself is made up of four stars oriented in a trapezoidal shape. These stars are Phi Sagittarii, Caus Meridionalis, Caus Australialis, and Acella. The teapot's handle creates a second trapezoid on the eastern side of the main pot and is composed of two more stars, Tau Sagittarii and Nunci. On the western side of the pot, the star Al Nazal creates a right triangle with Caus Meridionalis and Caus Australialis. The teapot's lid is created with the addition of the final star, Caus Borealis, creating a triangle with Phi Sagittarii and Caus Meridionalis. In order to find M8, the Lagoon Nebula, draw an imaginary line between the star Nunci in the teapot's handle and Caus Borealis, the top star of the teapot's lid. You can use your hand as a basic measurement tool. The distance between these two stars should be slightly more than the width of three fingers held at arm's length. When using hand measurement, simply do a visual approximation between Nunci and Caus Borealis. Continue the line past Caus Borealis by an equal distance and move on to step three. If you own a Telrad finder scope, you will notice that the distance between these two stars is just over 6 degrees, approximately one and a half times the width of the Telrad's reticle. Using a Telrad, the distance to M20 would be approximately one and a half times the width of your reticle, or about 6 degrees. Move the reticle, causing Caus Borealis to move from the western or right side of the reticle to the eastern or left side of your reticle. 
either of these methods should place M8 nicely within the field of view of your finder scope. Step 3. Move your eye to your magnified finder. At this point, you should have M8, the Lagoon Nebula, in your magnified finder scope. In dark skies, M8 should be easily visible in a 50mm or larger finder scope or binoculars. It will appear as a wispy cotton ball-like object. Center M8 in your finder scope. Step 4. Move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. Always start your observations at your widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen my 100 degree apparent field of view StellarView Optimus 20mm eyepiece on my StellarView SVX-130T Premier Apochromatic Refractor. Center your object in the field of view and slowly work your way down to smaller and smaller focal length eyepieces, centering each one until you get the desired field of view for your setup. Short focal length telescopes and long focal length eyepieces work best on this object due to its very large angular size. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos in which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribe to the channel. And click the notification bell if you want to find out each time I upload a new video. If you have a different method for finding M8 the Lagoon Nebula, want to provide me with feedback on this video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, or astrophotography, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you from Dave Farina here at CosmosSafari.com. Clear skies.